have a personal affinity for the Azio brand. Many years ago, I came across their Kickstarter for their now famous retro classic Bluetooth keyboard. As a fan of typewriters, I was intrigued by it. That turned out to be the first gift Lita ever bought for me as she backed the campaign knowing how much I wanted one of those nifty boards. That was also one of the first keyboard videos we ever filmed at what was then known as Sipnotech. Half a decade later, and I still pull that typewriter board out of my drawer here and there between review periods. Fast forward to last month when Azio asked us to take a look at their newest Kickstarter launch board, and I sat by the door with great anticipation. I've been using the Cascade 98 Slim for a few weeks now, and I think Azio might have another hit on the horizon. One look at this mechanical keyboard, and you can already recognize the charm implemented by Azio. They sent me the Slim model that has a force-themed keycap base that is a mixture of a satisfying moss green color, off-white, and a gooey gray. As the name implies, the Cascade 98 Slim is a 98% keyboard that utilizes 103 keys that includes a full numpad. The second part of the naming scheme distinguishes this particular board from the standard body, which has a normal-sized keycap. As far as slim boards go, this one actually is quite the minimalist in an approach. It's a little bit deceptive how thin the board is because the rear of the housing naturally has like an uphill slope. You can make the tilt even more drastic with two additional adjustable angles thanks to the adjustable feet. I've been locked in the first angle off the table as Azio lets you get pretty high off the surface and the highest angle is a bit too high even for me. Designed on top of a thin sheet of aluminium casing, the Cascade is extremely clean to look at. The default combination has a very serene vibe to it that matches what I'm currently trying to get my desk set up to kind of match. There's a little bit of weight behind the board which gives the product a sense of quality. If the Retro Classic is any indication, the Class Skate 98 Slim should be durable for a number of years. The switches are also hot swappable for customization and tinkering. I can't say this is the most high quality board I've owned, but for the retail price of $119, I actually think it is quite fair. One of the reasons why I keep using my older ASIO mechanical board is due to the ridiculously easy connectivity it has between multiple devices. This is a Bluetooth device after all. ASIO allows you to connect up to five devices at a time using various connection modes. You can plug the receiver in through a USB-C and get going right away or simply use a radio frequency connection. As somebody who runs Chrome OS, Windows, and Mac OS simultaneously, I can't tell you how much of a headache it has been over the years trying to find an effective way to switch between different operating systems with one peripheral. Not all Bluetooth keyboards switch flawlessly and reliably between the computers. That's one of the reasons I just I, I adored the Retro Classic over the years. Almost seven years later, and many different versions of software on operating systems, it still effortlessly works on my command. The Cascade 98 Slim is doing the exact same job just as well as my older ASIO did. They have really become my go-to recommendation for a reliable Bluetooth keyboard over the years. In the old days, ASIO would supply you with like different sets of keycaps so you can modify it to match whatever OS you're using. Nowadays, things are way more concise and efficient. On the Cascade, both the command key for macOS and the Windows key for Windows have a space on the 103 key layout. You can toggle between the operating system layout with programmed hotkey combinations. An LED indicator on the right side of the frame lets you know what system your keyboard layout is currently on. I'm accustomed to having a physical toggle on the frame to swap between the OS layouts and also the Bluetooth connections. It, it took a little bit of time for me to uh, kind of modernize my fingers and remember the hotkey combinations, but I guess this is a cleaner way to handle the switching as it frees up the case for a cleaner appearance. You don't need as many switches. However... The remaining physical toggles and switches, and also the charging port on the case, left me a little baffled. Okay, so, so the on and off switch sits right next to the USB-C port on the top right corner of the, of the case frame. They're oddly submerged deep inside of the frame. For example, the on-off toggle isn't easy to toggle blindly. First, you have to locate the hole with your finger and then kind of pry inside it with a fingernail. I, I don't really have fat fingers, and even I struggle to hit the switch with my fingernail. 
I found myself flipping the board up towards my eye line and then flipping the switch with my finger directing straight down to make the task easier to accomplish. The USB-C port is a whole other kind of bizarre issue. It's so submerged into the case that many of my USB-C cables actually couldn't plug into it all the way. In fact, of the five cables I normally use to charge my boards, only two of them were slim enough to actually fit into the mold. Even my trusty coil aviator cable was a a bit too thick for the USB-C connection to snap in all the way. I don't remember the last time I used a board where the port wasn't flush with the frame, or at least give you enough space to put it. It's been quite a while since I came into this type of conflict. I'm not too sure why ASIO didn't give the port more breathing room, but this is just a minor lifestyle complaint, as I am a bit meticulous to what kind of cables I use on my devices for my desk. Since this is mainly used as a Bluetooth keyboard, though, the built-in 3000 mAh battery on the Cascade 98 Slim survived a surprising amount of time without me turning it off. I use this particular keyboard about four hours every night, and I didn't toggle it off at all to test this out. I got the low battery indication about like a full week in. That's pretty good for such a thin profile. Now, let's talk about the most important aspect of a keyboard, which is the typing experience. To go along with the slim profile, I assume ASIO wanted a non-intrusive sound attached to the vanilla configuration. That makes sense as it comes with this quiet brown switch layout that you can barely hear in the background as you type. I don't have a specific keyboard sound that I'm like in love with as far as I can tell, either loud or soft, but I do like the minimal noise emitting from this board as it is a welcome change to some of the like recent mechanical keyboards that I've been re- reviewing in the office. Since this is a low-profile keyboard, there is an extremely shallow amount of travel that needs to be accomplished upon an input from your fingers. The board is rock sturdy, and it doesn't really rattle or move from its typing position. There's a really sturdy build quality that gives off a delightful sound profile to my ears. I feel productive hearing the clicks from the cascade. All I can say is that while a lot of my feelings are subjective and this will vary based on a particular user, I did find this board to be of high quality and it's also been a very enjoyable experience overall for me. For comparison, I've had the Logitech MX Mechanical for video editing use cases, which also sports a low profile build. That board is also uh, paired with brown switches and actually has a similar user experience to the Cascade 98. That's a good thing as the MX Mechanical was a terrific no-nonsense keyboard that I really enjoyed using for a professional use case. The biggest issue for me with the 98 is regarding a couple of the key location placements. Since this isn't a full-size board, there's some compacting of the board into two segments that were tricky. The numpad is clean and in a rectangular space with some separation from the main layout. I like that spacing a lot. What throws me off is the column of the shortcut keys that place the home button next to the backspace key. When typing with my furious train of thought, I often misclick the home button when intending to hit the backspace key. Sometimes my pinky naturally reaches for that section to hit the delete key. The problem is the delete key isn't located anywhere near the backspace or the backslash key as it will be located on most keyboard layouts. Instead, ASIO has it above the F row next to the F12 key. That's a bit awkward of a position to place a key I use so often and throws off my rhythm quite a lot. A few weeks in and I still haven't fully assimilated with this layout. I'd launch back to the front of my line a lot more than I ever did before due to this home button's placement next to the back's place without any separation of the space. I get why Azio wanted a a command column for hotkeys, but I would have preferred that delete key next to the back's place instead. One thing I did like a lot about the keycaps is the font choice though. It's a good mixture of playfulness, but can also fit into an office setting without looking silly. The keycaps also let the RGB pass through the letters, which is which makes the Cascade a really nice board to use in the dark room. There are 17 modes of RGB routines. While it doesn't do anything we haven't seen from mechanical keyboards with RGB lighting, the Cascade 98 does emit a vibrant and bright light. It just looks nice on my desk at all times. 
When it comes to RGB, though, I don't think OEMs really need to reinvent the wheel here. Just give us sharp colors with fun basic patterns and we'll be happy customers. That's exactly what the Cascade 98 does. As far as low profile mechanical keyboards go, I'm a fan of ASIO's take on slimming down the thicker Cascade form. I, I think some of the keys don't work from an efficiency placement point of view, but the 98 Slim is an extremely well-rounded keyboard in all other regards. As with my other ASIO boards, swapping between computers through Bluetooth is reliable and easy to approach. It really is. Anybody can do it. It's, a, it's really good to see the same consistency from this brand that I've been experiencing for half a decade now. Once again, I'm Alex from the Symnotics. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any comments you want to leave me about this board, post it in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time. So the other day, I was on a Zoom call at work and I just dropped everything I was saying and I told them, subscribe.